you for registering for my free 10 day video course uh, in which I'm going to share with you 10 essential understandings that you need to have if you are going to successfully clear your clutter. These are things that I learnt back in 2000 when I had my own clutter challenge and by turning these 10 things into practice I was able to successfully clear all my clutter in 2001. It took me a year to learn all of these foundation principles but you're lucky you can actually get access to them all over the next 10 days which means you will be able to clear your clutter a lot quicker and a lot easier than I did. So the first principle that you need to understand if you're going to successfully clear your clutter is the clutter clearing conveyor belt concept. OK, so we're going to think about our home as a conveyor belt. Things come into our home and onto the conveyor belt. Things then travel along the conveyor belt and may stay on the conveyor belt. My graphic correctly there. And then at some point, things come off the conveyor belt or out of the home. Get it right. There we go. Okay. So if we think about our front door, things come through that front door to come into our home and they come out of that front door to come out of our home, okay? Now, these three areas of our conveyor belt have got different names. The area where things come into our home or onto the conveyor belt is called the accumulation area because that's how we accumulate clutter. The only reason why we have clutter in our homes is because things have come in through that front door or maybe a back door if you usually use a back door than the front door. The area where things stay on the conveyor belt or travel along the conveyor belt, that's known as the organisation area of the conveyor belt. Okay. And then the area where things come off the conveyor belt and out of the home through that front door again is called the clutter clearing area of our conveyor belt. OK, now the clutter clearing area in the organisation area is where most people concentrate when they're trying to clear the clutter. But to successfully clear your clutter and ensure that it doesn't return, we actually need to make sure that we get back control of all three areas of the conveyor belt and make sure that they are all turning. OK, so when you've tried to clear your clutter in the past, when I uh, decided to move my clutter and create piles of clutter, all I was doing was moving my clutter around the organisation area of my conveyor belt. Nothing was actually coming off my conveyor belt or out of my home. I wasn't making decisions. I was just creating piles. I was moving the piles. Storage is just about the organisation area. It's about finding things to put the clutter in on the conveyor belt. Storage does not actually get anything out that front door and off that conveyor belt. Um, so concentrating on all three areas. So making decisions about what things can come out that front door and off the conveyor belt. Yes, organising what we need to keep uh, in a more efficient way. But the biggest shift for most people when they start their clutter clearing journey is realising that they also need to control this accumulation area, what's coming in through that front door. Again, when I had my clutter challenge, I, when after I'd had blitzes, I found that the clutter grew back overnight as if by magic or uh, uh, similar to mushrooms. Why was that? Well, that's because I hadn't controlled the accumulation of things that then became clutter. Because, like so many things, the principle of the conveyor belt is very simple. If more comes onto the conveyor belt and into our home, 
van comes off the conveyor belt, the clutter will grow up, build up on the conveyor belt. So we may have a blitz at the clutter clearing end of the conveyor belt and get a lot off and through that front door very quickly. But if we haven't controlled the accumulation of potential clutter, then over time it will build up on the conveyor belt again. Okay, so we need to actually put habits and routines in place to control all three areas of the conveyor belt so that they're all turning at the same speed, although while we're clearing our clutter, we actually want our clutter clearing end to turn a little bit faster than the accumulation end so that the net effect is that we're reducing the amount of clutter on the conveyor belt. But we need to create new habits so that once we have cleared that backlog that is currently on the conveyor belt, the clutter won't grow back again. Okay, so there are lots of ways that we accumulate clutter and a lot of these will be ones that you're familiar with, but also there may be some here that you haven't realised are actually accumulation. Let me share some of them uh, with you. Okay, so one of the most common ways that people accumulate clutter is shopping. So we buy things on impulse uh, or we go out to shop to feel better. When I had my clutter challenge, I uh, would hate being around my home because I could see the clutter. It made me feel worse. So I would go out and to make myself feel better, I would shop. I would buy things that I thought were going to make me a better person, uh, more creative, more intelligence, more, more well-rounded. I took up courses. I um, uh, bought uh, hobbies, uh, knitting, tapestry, um, photography. I bought books thinking that if I had an intelligent looking bookshelf, uh, that it would make a difference. Um, so very often each week I would actually go out shopping uh, and I would accumulate things that I ended up never needing, never using, um, but were nonetheless in my clutter. The supermarkets create a challenge for us as well. Mind you, uh, the general stores do that now as well. With the buy one, get one free offers. Uh, many a time I have been at the supermarket checkout and, some, and, and the cashier has said, oh, but you know these are on a buy one, get one free offer at the moment and I go yes but I don't need the other one um, and they look at me as if I have two heads you might be thinking are you crazy Claire well what I actually do now is I will take the free one that I know I don't need and that I know I don't have space for in my home and I will actually take that to a, a food bank uh, there is a food bank on the way, a food bank on the way uh, between uh, the supermarket and my home. Um, so I actually give it away because yes, it is uh, t uh, technically free. Therefore, let me pass it on to somebody else who can use it quicker than I can. Um, so, uh, so the buy one get one free. We often think that we're saving money. Yes, we are technically saving money, but that's at the expense of space. Uh, so again, we need to uh, kind of uh, just keep that in check a bit. Paperwork, the junk mail, the free newspapers, the menus that come through our doors for the takeaway uh, shops, the charity bags uh, that are a huge problem and the leaflets and flyers. It seems endless, doesn't it? We actually have a sticker on our front door that says no junk mail, free newspapers, menus, charity bags, leaflets or flyers. And you know what? It does cut it down, but it doesn't stop it. And the reason is because here in the UK, the postman actually delivers a lot of it. And the postman is legally responsible for ensuring that what is in his uh, post bag for a particular address goes through that letterbox. Uh, and when I've spoken to our postman, they often get very frustrated because people obviously aren't happy with getting this junk mail through uh, their letterbox and they can't do anything about it. Um, it is a huge problem. We make sure that our recycling box for all of the things that we don't want 
um, that do come through that front door, we make sure that there is a box, a container near our front door. So it goes straight in there. So it doesn't even make its way into our home uh, and end up on a surface uh, and create a pile. Because uh, I don't know about you, but for me, if I put a pile of paper down, that becomes a bit of a clutter magnet. And suddenly that grows because that almost becomes a okay place to put paper. Um, so we make sure that we don't create uh, piles everywhere. What else do we have? We have things that we accumulate that we think, oh, I'll read that. Uh, that'll be interesting. Maybe it's magazines that we haven't read um, or articles that we've we've taken out uh, of, of magazines or the leaflets that we've picked up while we're out. Uh, especially if we're on holiday, we may pick up lots of leaflets thinking, oh, I might go here. And then we bring them home from holiday and we think, oh, well, if I ever go back there again, at least I've got the leaflet and I can plan a trip. Never quite happens that way, does it? Um, so again, we can often accumulate a lot with reading. Buying books is a big is a big challenge for many. I know it was a big challenge for me. Uh, I think I mentioned about the fact that uh, for me, I thought, well, if I've got all the the classic books and you know the books that I read at school and didn't understand, let's get those and see if I understand them now. Um, and I didn't. And I didn't read half of them. I would read a few pages and then I would. I would just uh, stop but I still felt guilty for having these books that I hadn't read so I kept them so again uh, we can we can uh, go out shopping and feel better for having bought these but then when we come through that front door uh, it's not quite the same and we realize we don't have the time we don't have the energy we don't have the inclination to actually do the doing with these things but we still keep them on our conveyor belt uh, the mail uh, and the post the genuine mail and the genuine post. So that's things like the letters, uh, the utility bills, the bank uh, statements, the credit card statements, the things that we do actually need to accumulate and, 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 and check, um, they come through daily. Um, magazines and catalogues. Catalogues is one of the first things that I encourage my clients to ban from their home. Or they are a temptation to buy. And especially when we're clearing our clutter, it's not until we've actually cleared the clutter off the conveyor belt that we think about storage and organisation. Um, and that may be a couple of months down the line. So get rid of the, the, the magazines and the catalogues, especially with the catalogues. The most current up to date information is always on the Internet anyway. Um, so uh, it's important that we, we don't allow temptation uh, in our way, especially if we know that we are um, uh, challenged by uh, um, buying things, uh, again, to make ourselves feel better. Perfectly normal, I did that when I had my, cl my clutter challenge, um, but we need to take temptation out of that way. Um, what else do we have? We have daily newspapers. I always encourage people to uh, cancel their newspaper um, uh, order and uh, go online, because although you may have to subscribe online to get access to the, the newspaper website that is often cheaper than actually buying a newspaper and again it's not physically taking up space um, it's it's uh, a good intention to read the newspaper the whole newspaper but the reality is do we have the time to read it uh, my golden rule is that I do subscribe to a couple of magazines and my golden rule is, is is that if I have not read the whole of the magazine, if I have not finished the magazine, by the time the next month's one arrives, then the old one comes off the conveyor belt. And although there may be articles in there that would be of interest, the reality is if I haven't managed to read the whole of the magazine in one month, then it's very unlikely that the next month I'll be able to read the whole of that month's magazine and what's left over from the previous month's magazine. Does that make sense? So if I can't read 100% of the magazine in a month, then I'm unlikely to be able to read more than 100% of a magazine the following month. So I let it go, I pass it on. And then one form of accumulation that you may not have thought of before, um, but a lot of people realise, actually, you know what, that, that, that is a challenge for me, is things that we print off the internet. 
So the things that you print off from your computer, the interesting information. And we print it off and we put it in a pile because, oh, I'll read that when I get a chance. That looks interesting. Uh, again, that might help me. But it gets printed off and it gets put in a pile. And as we know, that pile becomes a clutter magnet. And so the pile grows. Uh, and we never actually get to read it. But then when we go through that pile of paperwork, we think, oh gosh, yes, I was going to read that. I'm going to put it in a pile to read it. And so the cycle uh, begins. I have a very strict rule with printing things off. Every week I do a paperwork clutter clearing session and I go through things that I have printed off from the internet over the week. And I do struggle sometimes with going, oh, but I really want to read that. But again, the reality is that if I haven't managed to read uh, um, things from last week, this week, I'm unlikely to be able to read all of that plus next week's reading uh, uh, over the course of the next week. It does actually cost us money as well because we're using toner uh, to print off these things and paper. Uh, and if you've got a computer printer, you'll know how expensive those cartridges are. Uh, so it does literally cost us money. One quite amusing uh, consequence of this is that I quite often get calls or emails from people who are asking about a product or a service um, that uh, I may have offered years ago. Uh, I've been doing this since 2001. Uh, so obviously there's been quite a few versions of the way that I help people uh, and the, uh, op the, the options that are available. And I will have to say, though, I'm afraid we don't, we don't offer that anymore. That's not available anymore. And what's happened is that they saw the, the website, they printed the information off the website, they put it in a pile, they're having a blitz, they're not succeeding with their blitz, but they did find that thing they printed off several years ago about clutter clearing and the help that's available, and then they take an action. So like I say to people, the most current information, whether it's catalogues, the news or indeed information is on the website. So actually, we're better off to bookmark a particularly interesting page uh, on our web browser rather than printing it off because that saves time, that saves money. Uh, and it also means that we're going to feel less overwhelmed because we are not seeing that clutter. Does that make sense? OK, uh, the organisation area. Uh, what do we know about this? Well, although we need to start thinking about how we're going to organise our home when it's clutter free, we don't actually focus on this area uh, until we've actually cleared the clutter off the conveyor belt, uh, because we don't yet know how much we need to organise and store. A lot of uh, people with clutter will focus on organisation and storage but I always tell them, forget about that for now. Our priority when we start our clutter clearing journey is to clear the clutter. Uh, and although you may think that you've got 100 books that you need to organise and store, by the time we've actually cleared the clutter, it may be that you have half as many books uh, that actually need organising and storing. So if you've bought a book bookcase that houses 100 books, that's going to be half empty by the time you actually come to organise those books. Does that make sense? So we don't worry about organisation in detail until we have actually cleared uh, your clutter. Like I say, this is a journey. A lot is going to change between now and when you've cleared your clutter. Now, we do uh, do something uh, with our organisation area while we're on our journey just to make sure that those piles don't start appearing again uh, and the clutter doesn't start growing because I don't know whether you've had this uh, but when I cleared my clutter um, one of the worst things was I would blitz a bit of clutter this is before I knew how to clear it but I would blitz an area spend a weekend blitzing it I'd feel exhausted by the end but yay great I can see the surfaces I can see uh, floor area and then by the following weekend it had grown back again uh, and that took away my energy, that took away um, my motivation, the will to live um, and so I would put off dealing with it uh, as long as possible. Well we have something that we do in this organisation area that, that helps prevent that um, so that we can maintain the clutter-free spaces that we create. 
Okay, and then moving on to the uh, clutter clearing area of the conveyor belt. We are actually only clearing our clutter, like I said earlier, when we get things off that conveyor belt. How do we get things off that conveyor belt? Okay, well, uh, very often people say, oh, well, I, I, I take things to charity. I've got a pile of things for charity. Okay, great. So you've done some clutter clearing and you've made a pile of things that are going to be charity donations. Excellent. But they are still on your conveyor belt. Even if you put them by the front door, they are still technically on this conveyor belt. They are not cleared. Things are only clutter cleared when they come off the conveyor belt. To actually clutter clear those things, you need to take those things to the charity shop. Then we literally have more space. Okay. How about shredding? Lots of people say, oh, well, I've, I've done shredding. I've done a lot of shredding, Claire. Great. Meet shredding Shirley. But again, doing our shredding, it's still on our conveyor belt, even if it's in our shredder. Even if we put it in our recycling container, it's still on our shredder, it's still on our conveyor belt. Until it's actually collected and removed for recycling, it is not off the conveyor belt. Okay, so we need to empty that recycling, the shredding that we've done, into the recycling container so it can come off the conveyor belt. Let uh, the curbside recyclers take it away. And likewise with the rubbish, the rubbish trash recycling. Some people say, oh, well, I've got a lot in, uh, in the rubbish bin. Great. But if that rubbish bin is in your home, on this side of your front door, it is still technically on your conveyor belt. It is not off your conveyor belt until you have put it out ready for curbside collection. Does that make sense? So again, when uh, some people start clearing their, their clutter, especially hoarders, they will actually find that there are a lot of charity donations. There's a lot of shredding that they have or haven't done. There's a lot of recycling that has or hasn't gone out. Uh, and there's a lot of rubbish, trash, uh, recycling that hasn't actually physically come off the conveyor belt so they can get some very good quick voluminous wins in the early stages by actually taking the things to the charity shop putting out the recycling and putting out the rubbish trash okay that way they are actually clutter clearing now, those uh, people who have joined me on a live clutter clearing session will know that I say that even if you only get one piece of paper off your conveyor belt in the first session that you do, you have done some clutter clearing because it has come off that conveyor belt. If it's going the other side of your front door for somebody else to deal with, it is off your conveyor belt. Now, a lot of people will find that they find things in their clutter which are things that they need to do. Some people even find that they find a lot of to-do lists from, that they've accumulated over the years of things that they feel that they should be doing. Okay, So to-do lists is another way that we can accumulate clutter because we keep the thing associated with the action. Maybe it needs fixing or mending or sorting out. Once again, the to-do list is something which enables us to actually get quite a lot of clutter off the conveyor belt. Because, for example, doing the shredding is a to-do list item. If we don't actually do it, we can't cross it off the to-do list and get it off our conveyor belt. Taking things to the charity shop is, to, is a to-do list item because we need to do it. But again, we've put it on a list and we haven't actually followed through with it. Returning something that belongs to somebody else, that classic scenario where you've lent a CD or a, or a DVD to a friend and you never got it back. Um, well, it may be that you're the person that did the borrowing and you find things amongst your clutter that actually belongs to somebody else and that needs to be returned. So again, once we've crossed that off the to-do list because we have returned it to that person, it is off that conveyor belt because it's back with its owner. So the to-do list is just as valuable at clearing our clutter as doing some categorising and sorting and some decision making. But 
in order for things to be truly clutter cleared, it is going to require decision making. That's where the creating piles of types of clutter is actually not clutter clearing because you are not making decisions. All you are doing is sorting things according to type. Does that make sense? So I've got a couple of questions and I'd love to know uh, what it, how it relates to you. Okay, uh, so in the comment box below, I would love you to, to share uh, uh, one or more of the following three questions. So which area of your clutter conveyor belt have you been concentrating on when you've tried to declutter? So which area of your conveyor belt have you been concentrating on when you've tried to declutter? Second question, which area of your clutter conveyor belt have you actually been ignoring? So which area of your clutter conveyor belt have you actually been ignoring? Have you actually been getting things off the conveyor belt? Uh, if not, then you may have unconsciously been ignoring the clutter clearing end. And then the third and final question, what one thing could you do today to get your conveyor belt turning more evenly and efficiently? So what one thing could you do today to get your clutter conveyor belt turning more evenly and efficiently? Do pop your answers below because I promise you uh, that by reading other people's comments uh, and answers to those questions, uh, you will discover that you are not alone uh, in your challenges, in your struggles and in your experiences with your clutter conveyor belt. Uh, if there's one thing I've learned uh, since 2001, it is that talking about it and sharing this uh, and, and sharing the challenges that we face with our clutter with others who are in a similar situation um, really, really helps. Just knowing that you are not alone uh, makes a huge, huge difference uh, in terms of your motivation and indeed your belief that you can clear this and you truly can. When I had my clutter challenge, when I started, my accumulation was horrendous. I was in complete denial about how much shopping that I was doing, how much impulse buying I was doing, how much paperwork I was accumulating, how many books I was accumulating, how much unnecessary post and paperwork I was, I was accumulating. Uh, I had endless magazines and catalogues, magazines that I thought, oh, well, I keep them because I haven't read them. Papers, I, I bought a daily newspaper and I was endlessly printing things off my computer. I was in complete denial that this was even going on. Uh, I was focused on the organisation, buying storage, thinking that that was going to solve the problem. And I actually wasn't doing any real clutter clearing because not a lot was actually coming off the conveyor belt when I had a blitz uh, and, and tried to declutter. So actually being aware that this is how your clutter conveyor belt works and being aware of how we need it to start all turning uh, simultaneously uh, will definitely help uh, in terms of that start of a mind shift that we need as we start to clear our clutter. I shall leave you with that board for, for a few moments uh, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, with the next video uh, in this current series.